right, hello there YouTube, this is Tom. I took a little pointer from our friend Old 64 Goat, Bill, and we have the bloggy touch on a tripod. And this will be the introduction to the restoration of the Kenwood TS520. First, we're just gonna. I wanted to open up the case, and I'm gonna show. Give you a little overview of where we're starting with this. Is that in the camera? There we go. I'm gonna zoom in. This will be interesting. That board right there in the middle has the uh, finals, the final, uh, yeah, the capacitors underneath it, the big capacitors, uh, final cage capacitors. This is, the finals are in here, the tubes, which I'll show you later. So this board is what I'm going to start with. I'm going to pull this board, replace the big caps underneath it, and then replace uh, these little caps on it and every cap in here will be replaced. There's electrolytics you can see in these boards. Now the boards I found out from the guy I bought them from do not have to be unsoldered or completely taken out. There's screws on the boards. They lift out. You can see how long these wires are and you can actually manipulate them enough to work around and underneath them. If they have to come apart, all the wires are connected to the boards by wire wrap posts. And I don't know if you know anything about wire wrap posts, but back in the day, they would wrap wire tightly around the post with a little mechanism, and I think they used a little electric machine, or it might have even been a hand-cranked machine. And it wraps the wire real tight around the post, and it makes a me uh, mechanical electrical connection. It's not even soldered. And I asked him, you know, if I take these apart, do I have to solder these back on or do you put connectors on them? Because you cannot rewrap them and make them an efficient uh, connection. And the fella Jim said to just re-solder them. However, if I'm careful that the way the radio was designed, I should be able to pull the boards and manipulate them around enough to get the caps out and not have to unwrap or re-solder any posts. We'll see. They are right down there and you can see they're quite large. The capacitors that I got as replacements I do not think are as big. They're probably the right rating but they're smaller in size. And then of course the capacitors on top of this board have to be replaced and I'll have to get at them by desoldering them from underneath, which I'm going to try to loosen this up a little more to get this board up and out of here. Sorry, I was not in the camera. Get this board up and out of here so that I can uh, desolder underneath. Get the big So the bottom of those high voltage capacitors is right there. And uh, I had suspected this radio has been having those capacitors replaced before. At least somebody's worked on them. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. Probably. These wires have teeth marks from pliers and the solder on these is quite shiny. Looks like it's been reworked on both of these. So I don't know if those are replacements or not, but I'm replacing them anyway. Alright, I'm going to edit this little clip in too because I wanted to show you the capacitors that are going in there. You can see these are pretty narrow. I think the other ones are probably almost double the height of these. Uh, but they're the same voltage rating and these, these uh, clamps go around the base of them and they get clamped to the other side of this and you can see there's screws coming through so that all gets done underneath that circuit board that's on the other side. I don't know how I'm going to get in there to get at those screws to pull these out. It's going to be a challenge. Oh, again, we're looking at these caps again. I have the other side 
unscrewed so they are now loose there's like clamps that hold them in place and they're discharged I made sure they were grounded and discharged these are 500 volt caps I had this radio on about a week ago probably wouldn't have held a charge but you never know uh, <clears throat> I was examining them, trying to figure out what's negative, what's positive, because they're electrolytics, and there's absolutely no marking on the side of the capacitor on the other side of the chassis. And you'll notice two black dots <clears throat> on those. Uh, those are the negatives. And I figured that out because this one is going up to ground. But then I'm looking at it going, okay, if that's to ground, why is the negative and the positive going together here? That seems a little odd. Usually you have the negatives together to ground and the positives going to different places. Uh, but not always. And uh, I learned that from John, Joe Arnon, uh, on a couple of his radios. He talked about how you can have some different arrangements with positive and negatives. So I wanted to make sure I'm dealing with positive and negative in the right way, so I put them back in correctly. So I have the schematic here. It's quite tiny. Although this is the original manual and this is a fairly good sized schematic in that it folds out. <clears throat> Let's see if we can focus. Right here are the two capacitors. We have two 500 volt capacitors. Those are the ones they are uh, and you'll notice a positive on the right of each of those and you'll notice that they tie together in the middle and it's a negative to a positive and then the negative of this one going to ground and the positive of this one going off to other parts of the radio so indeed it does have the negative and the positive of each side of that of those two different capacitors are connected together just like what we see in the radio so I'm gonna be unsoldering those next and uh, we'll get back to uh, having them in the next time we're on quick little update from the other side as you can see one of them's out there it is, and there's the new one. Quite a difference in size, and it is marked. And it is original. It's Elna, which is all the brand that was in all the rest of this thing. 500 volts, 100 picofarad, microfarad. Uh, black is negative, as I figured out before from the black dot on the bottom, and the schematic. And uh, this will be its replacement. Significantly smaller, also 500 volts. This is 120 microfarads, but that's what the guy sent as the recap kit. I, that's probably all that's available anymore. And uh, a new clamp that's made to fit this capacitor and should fit in there. So okay, here we are with the caps back in, and Chloe's guarding the old ones. You can see that one is uh, quite a bit dirtier. It has a lot of dust on it. I suspect the high voltage for whatever reason was more on that cap and pulled more into it, I don't know. I was looking at it again, I'm not, I can't pull it out now, I don't have it handy, but I was looking at the schematic again and the uh, couple things on it. <clears throat> the, as I said, the negative goes to the positive. Then the positive rail over here goes to ground. The positive on this side goes to this board and this is a high voltage type board uh, but the middle of these two which is kind of like a center tap of them almost goes off here and it goes through here and it goes to the transformer and the transformer puts out a huge amount of voltage uh, up to 800 volts and actually that one right there that's coming off there is 800 volts of AC and then I well it's rather it would be DC yeah it's through there but 
At any rate, there's 800 volts through this, through that one. So I think, I don't remember which I pulled out of where, but I think the one, you know, the voltage develops across them and there's a higher voltage on the one side of it. Good morning. I thought I would uh, work on this a bit more and I got the radio up on the bench. Went to start looking at this board to start recapping it. And look what I found. When I was manipulating the uh, the new caps underneath, you can see the new high voltage caps, I knocked a wire off. I've actually already stripped the end of this. <clears throat> Thank God I took pictures and this is a lesson learned in why I do it and why anybody that works on electronics should always take pictures before you get involved. Let me turn my radio down. All these orange wires. I narrowed it down to this wire here. If you can see my mouse. It goes down, under there, through there, and to the base of this post. It's hard to tell it's at the base of that post, but I know it is because on the board itself, focus, focus, this is the post here, and it has a section of wire, I think you can see it wrapped at the bottom of that post with nothing connected to it. And then there's a wire at the top of that post. And the wire at the top of the post is the one that is here that comes up from the bottom to the top of the post. And I think I have another picture of that here. It's harder to see. This is the post. That's one of the wires. These were the only two pictures, no, maybe there were three. Yeah, this one, this is a poor picture because of the glare of the camera flash. This is the one that saved me <laughs> because uh, I realized there was no wire here and I fouled it over, boom. So lesson learned, I'm gonna solder that back in place. One little and last then we're gonna get update to here and then I'm gonna edit this all up and uh, upload the video. I don't want these videos to be too long. I ended up taking all the capacitors for the whole radio and organizing them into the bins. There's a lot of capacitors. All these have to be replaced. This is going to be quite a long job. The worst part is on soldering them and I'll show you what I've done real quick. We already did the voltage, high voltage caps, which I showed you. And now we're working on the uh, fixed crystal board. And I, I couldn't think of the name of it. It's called an AV Chris, fisk, fixed crystal board. I have pulled out C8 from here. This is not gonna focus, focus. There it is. C8, you can see there. And it, uh, there's four electrolytics on this board. Actually, yeah, four. That's not an electrolytic. There's one, two, three, and then four. And I did, I was able to get pretty good access from, to this board by taking it back. Uh, I can get underneath it. It's just very time consuming to use a solder sucker and get everything apart, pull them out and then put the new one in. It took me probably 10 minutes just to get that one capacitor out. When I look at the sheer volume of them all, I'm thinking I might end up buying a uh, desoldering, uh, electric desoldering sucker at some point. I gotta price them and see, uh, cause this is gonna take forever. But I want to do it carefully, slowly, meticulously, and get it done and have a hopefully a nice uh, working radio when I'm finished. And then as I'm going to, I'm taking each of these uh, boards and cleaning them with denatured alcohol and some uh, Q-tips, which I haven't cl cleaned that yet, but I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to clean everything in here, lubricate everything, etc., etc. So this will be a long uh, series, and I'm going to cut this one short here and edit up what I have and put up one video, and 
we'll go from there. I don't know how quickly I'll get videos up in the series because this is going to be a long process and I do work full time so this is only a hobby. Oh, I thought I'd show you real quick. Uh, we had some snow and I'm going to put up the video of my of the snow blowing. There's the big nor'easter storm that they predicted all weekend was going to come up the east coast and be terrible. We got about four inches, maybe five. Big deal. They probably gave it a name too. It drives me crazy when they give storms, winter storms names. It's called snow. It's called winter. Okay, this is Tom.